visually when people like draw a picture for me or because um, I used to like not have the skill that when you draw a picture or it says draw a picture I used to not do that because I didn't know how to do it but now I think some of the teachers that I've had have taught me how to draw a picture and always write things down so it's easier for me now. Um, I like history because um, I like learning about what people used like the tools they used to use and because um, in my grade we learn about early humans so I like learning about people that long ago. Um, but I like English too. I like writing. Oh, music, music is my yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah. singing. Yeah. On warm days, I'll go in the ocean and I'll probably go under big waves. She loves water. Well, an inordinate amount of water. I mean, she was taken to Hawaii when she was six months old and her first year and a half was there. So she was in the water a lot. But um, I think it has a lot to do with her comfort space. We did early on, yes. And they gave me interesting tools to use again and again when it would come up and I would see it manifest. So for a little while it had helped through preschool and kindergarten. And then as she began to need to read, for example, it came up and you could tell where she was maybe missing. So I wouldn't say it's a complete curricula, but it's a, it's a method of trying to help her, uh, almost tutor, which is more visual. And you, and you can watch and see it with teachers and parents too. When, when they were in these classes early on, you could see um, certain teachers understood it better than others and were able to sit calmly and explain things. And an example is that uh, Frankie doesn't like it when people get very um, aggressive with her. She doesn't, a lot, of, a lot of kids don't like to be told they're wrong, but she especially doesn't. She'd rather have a very calm conversation with you if something isn't right and have someone explain it. But if everyone gets very agitated or very demanding or direct or loud with her, you can see her shy away from that, doesn't like that at all. I think um, honesty, really important at a much earlier age than what our society deems is acceptable for kids to know. If she asks, I tell her. Uh, and her dad the same way. It's really important and, and to be very direct about our answers, not to uh, candy coat it or make it, make it sound child appropriate. Um, food is a really big thing. It's part of what I believe is important and that we need to strive for anyway in our, in our society. So healthy, clean food, not a lot of sugar, things like that. Control is a big issue. It's interesting, she went right to it. Uh, um, in the dark, uh, she doesn't feel she has control of what's around her. And it's almost like uh, needing a guiding light sometimes. And I know a lot of kids are afraid of the dark, but I see it as this link back to control because she, she has a very strong sense of control through these um, talents, if you will, of things around her, all the way back to teleporting. But when she feels out of control, that's when things start to get really rocky. And, and you can see a very emotional reaction. And, and trusting my intuition about what I felt was so different about Frankie and knowing that there were things that I could do to help her and to be her guide that came from just knowing rather than needing to study about it because there wasn't a lot to study. And I made a mistake last week. I took Frankie into a crystal shop, oh. and there was a tarot reader there, and she had her tarot cards read, which is the first time. Now, I, I've read angel cards for years. I've read her cards. She understands that. But um, I didn't explain to the person reading the cards about Frankie. <laughs> and when he came out, his eyes were giant, and he looked at me, and she was okay. I explained to Frankie. But it's really important sometimes that you explain to people around because he looked, he said, I've never had a reading like that in all my life. That, and she kept coming up with these amazing cards. And I said, well, maybe I should have told you that she's in the realm of indigo crystal children. And he said, oh, my goodness, thank goodness you explained it. It, it, it sets it in context because I've never had a reading with an adult even like that. I didn't quite know what to make of it. 
So I think it helps at times also to explain to people. And, and maybe by, by doing this now, it's the beginning steps of feeling more free to talk about it. It's kind of strange to just see him close his eyes. Every time he pulled a card, he would be like, oh, what happened? It really... There is more and more of an ability to understand what we're talking about through communicated through mediums that everyone can understand. So if you, if you look, for example, at the average movies coming out, more and more you'll begin to see little pieces of this coming in, maybe as these indigo children are, are, produ are able to produce things like that. Mm -hmm. even, even mainstream movies. I was thinking about this like um, Home that just came out, which is animated. It's really good. It's very entertaining, and it absolutely deals with this because the, the little beings, quote, UFOs, change color by their feelings and how they, they can't hide anything. And it's really well done. And the more of that, I think, that we see, the more it will desensitize us from believing that it's rare or it's weird or, or, or wacky, right? Because it's mainstream. How could Disney be weird, wacky? Um, openness. Discipline in a in a in a calmer way, perhaps. Discipline is important, um, and boundaries and parameters are important. But um, but they don't. She doesn't respond well, and and children like her don't respond well to um, very aggressive disciplining. It has to come from encouraging her to do something well, rather than correcting her for not having done something well. Now I'm not I'm not saying that that is um, that is to be soft or not to give these parameters, but um, you need to work really hard to encourage them to um, express what's in what's going on in their mind because a lot of times you can tell that there's an entire other dialogue going on in her mind where I might be in a very real moment right now and her dialogue doesn't allow her to hear me at times. Community is everything. Absolutely develop your community of people around you, of people that even as adults have like-minded feelings because then you don't feel so out there. I mean, for me to even talk about this in this way is, is not easy. I don't talk about it with everyone around me because they'll think you're absolutely nuts. <laughs> I mean, if I explain to the average person that she teleported an animal when she was little, they will write me off as a, a whack from day one. But... Actually, as Frankie's gotten older and I'm getting older, as we're moving into a much more um, open uh, generation of people who understand that these things can happen, the information, even from when she's born, has gotten much greater. And it's a little easier to, now to have those discussions than you could. So to find people that fit into sort of a realm of your community is a really good thing, and it's important. And, and make sure also that you're in sync if there's two of you parenting. Make sure you're in sync with what you're saying and that both people, even though they may not feel exactly the same about these um, gifts, that you find a way to talk about them similarly so that you're not playing one off against the other. Well, most of the time I realize that it's not mine because I see other people around me, that my family, that they're acting so great and then I realize it's just me. <laughs> yeah, when I go around happier people, Unless they're people that aren't genuine, though. Yeah. Because Frankie seems to sense BS very quickly. She can tell if people are real and, and good, like good people internally. And she doesn't have a lot of um, time for ones that aren't. Um, I feel it's really important that she gains a strong sense of self and independence to be able to take care of herself and to be able to control the information that as she gets older is going to come in more and more so that she can hear what she wants to and know how to push away the excess too. And as much as I'll always be a part of her life, she has to stand on her own. I want to live to be 500. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so cool. It's a, it is a constant balance because I love, I love the innocence in her and I want to maintain that as long as possible because someday she's going to have a really big job to do like we all do or a lot of children that are in this range do. 
and I want her to feel free and light and fun right now. So we balance it with how much information comes in to begin with. You're right, smart is it's it's tough because if they're inquisitive, you want to be able to answer. As I said, honestly, it's critical that you do, but you also don't want to expose them to too much before their time so that they can still have that innocence. And it's also exposure to a village of people around her. So it's not just us raising her, it really is the village that's raising her. It takes a village. It does, right? <laughs> And having people of very diverse backgrounds interact in her life. And always believing, although she's a child, that she is a participant in whatever we do. So and because I've exposed her to so many adults and she goes everywhere, um, she is a confidant of many of these people that I interact with too. So she knows more about more people's lives that she keeps in confidence than almost anyone but somehow balances it with it not being too weighty on her shoulders. <laughs> she'll tell me something, and then she'll be like, oh, you can't say anything to anyone, though. So I feel like there's a jar of all these things I don't know what to tell or not tell. <laughs> <laughs> and some of it you figure out on your own anyway. Or I'll just tell people, because I don't know what to tell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm good at keeping secrets. <laughs> and giving advice, too? Yeah. You I could be it. a therapist. <laughs> I think I could be a therapist. Do you? Yeah. Well, I used to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that at my hobbies. Um, but now I want to be a maternity nurse. And I want to go to places in need and help them. Um, cleaner. Less pollution, I think. They're going to change that, and um, I think more, um, I think that um, they're going to explore more places that we have never seen before, like maybe different galaxies, <coughs> or, um, and I think they're going to figure out things that people have never seen before. I think the acknowledgement of the power that they have as beings, yes, they're children, but the spirit is almost so much more powerful and honoring that. So it's a it's a real gift. There is no doubt. My own the rest of my own life and her, they're all intertwined in this beautiful gift and I feel really fortunate. Be yourself. I think that's the most important thing, to be yourself and be true true to yourself. Uh, I think be honest and be honest with your child and realize how much more we as adults have to learn from, from all of these beautiful souls that we have the privilege of helping to be here and grow up. That's really important.